There is this stereotype out there that says engineering is super hard, and I'm not surprised that people think so because the internet is flooded with things like this. It's come to the point where whenever I meet someone new and they ask me about myself and I tell them I studied engineering, I'm faced with replies like this. Oh my god, you must be so smart. How are you such a genius? You must be really good with curves. I'm not kidding about the last one, but anyways, usually my response is the same and I always say engineering honestly isn't as hard as everyone makes it seem. So in this video, I'm going to explain why engineering isn't as hard as everyone makes it out to be with six reasons. First, when someone says something is hard, it has to be relative to something else. So if you're going to compare engineering to other majors like communications, art, marketing, etc., then yeah, relative to them, engineering is hard. In comparison, the workload is heavier and the concepts are a little bit more difficult to understand. However, keep in mind that the material that you're learning is something that you've never seen before. Any college degree could be hard if it's actually designed to challenge you. Unfortunately, many programs are just watered down poly degrees, but engineering is not one of them. These watered down poly degrees tend to have class schedules like this, whereas engineering class schedules look like that. But notice how your engineering class schedules aren't that different from what your high school class schedules probably look like. And in both cases, you'll find yourself being in class from like 8 to 3 or 9 to 4. So it's not that engineering is just particularly hard, it's that the majors we compare engineering to are ridiculously easy. This is not an attempt to throw shade at other majors, but engineering degrees or even STEM degrees tend to actually try to teach you something in the 4 or 5 years that you're there. So because of that, yes, it might challenge you, but that doesn't mean it's not doable, and it's not as hard as everyone makes it out to be. Second, it's no surprise that engineering has a lot of math in it, but a big reason for why people think engineering is really hard is is because they think they're bad at math. However, I don't think anyone is particularly bad at math for two reasons. First, sure, yeah, I know that some people may understand the concepts better than you or you may feel like they get it more intuitively than you do, but it doesn't mean that they're smarter or better than you. It's actually because they probably had some kind of unfair advantage growing up. If someone had a really good math teacher growing up, you know, one that always encourages them, helps them when they're lost, reassures them and tells them that they're good at math, then eventually they believe that. Also, math is a type of class that builds on itself. So if you don't understand the concepts in your earlier math years, then you're going to struggle later on in your other math courses. For example, if you never truly understood Pythagorean theorem, which is a concept you learn in middle school, then when you go to university and you start doing more complicated physics questions, you will struggle with the math behind those questions. So essentially, no one is bad at math. If you think you're bad at math, it's only because you had awful teachers growing up that couldn't truly teach you the concepts and they'd always tell you you're bad at math, which is why you actually believe that you're bad at math, but you're not. So this brings me to my second reason for why no one is truly bad at math, which is that to be good at math, it's just a game of practice. The more practice you do, the better you'll be at math. Simple as that. If you struggle to understand algebraic manipulation of more advanced polynomials, do more practice. If you struggle to understand how and when to use the conservation of energy equation in physics, do more practice. And if you struggle to understand the Navier-Stokes equation in fluid mechanics, do more practice. All your engineering courses will teach you equations and concepts that you can use all the word problems that you have to solve. Now some will be easy and some will be hard. The one thing you have to remember is no problem is too difficult to solve. If you genuinely struggle or have no idea how to do a specific type of question, you just need more practice. Now, of course, you may face difficult questions on the exam where you only have 15 minutes to figure out a solution to a problem that you've never seen before. And that might make you feel like you want to cry as soon as you leave the exam room, but you won't because as you leave the exam room, you realize that everyone else couldn't answer it either, which means the professor will probably curve the grades up. So essentially, all you gotta do is just realize that if you do enough practice, no problem will be too difficult to solve. A common myth is that you have to be smart to study engineering, but that's not true. Truly, anybody can do it if they do enough practice and they put in enough work. Think about it like this. Let's say we have five people, each with different levels of smartness. Their level of smartness is based on their intuition, memory, previous knowledge, and their ability to grasp concepts quickly. Clearly, as you can see, no one fully achieved 100%. So to fill in the rest, you have to work hard, you have to study, and you have to practice. From this diagram, you see that most students will have to study more than others, and it may take them longer to understand some concepts, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Out of these five people, I was probably this one right here, as I wouldn't call myself naturally smart, so I had to put in a lot of hard work. However, out of those five, the worst thing you can be is the one with the highest smartness level. 
that's because you're probably going to have a high ego and just think that you can probably pass all your courses by partying and doing as little studying as possible. Basically, if you do this method, what's going to happen is in your first year, you're probably going to end up passing your courses, but you won't develop any good study habits. But later in your second, third, and fourth year, when things get really, really difficult, you're going to have no study habits that you develop from first year, which means you're going to probably fail your courses and not make it through engineering. But I mean, that's not specific to engineering. If you don't study or do any work, then you'll fail anything that you try to learn. I think a fair comparison to do with engineering is comparing it to medicine and law. So let's do that. Engineering, medicine, and law tend to have similar pay and similar social status after you graduate. To become an engineer, you basically need to spend four, maybe five years max to get your engineering degree. Then you can start working professionally as an engineer. On the other hand, if you want to become a doctor, you probably need to spend at least eight years of schooling because you can't just become a doctor after your undergrad degree. You need to go to med school. The same thing applies to being a lawyer. You have to spend about seven years of schooling, four years in your undergrad, and about three years in law school to become a lawyer. And more or less, the pay for these professions is arguably similar after you graduate. So with that in mind, people can make the argument that engineering is actually the easiest. That's because it requires the least amount of schooling, you pay the least amount of tuition, and you still get the same social status and pay in comparison to doctors and lawyers. On the other hand, engineering students tend to argue that engineering is actually the hardest since it's like taking an eight-year program and condensing it into a four-year undergrad program to get your engineering degree. Many engineering students like to treat their major like a badge of honor, like, oh my god, I study engineering, which means my major is so much harder than whatever major is that you're taking. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to the work that you're willing to put in. The threshold for intelligence in engineering isn't super high. It really just comes down to the amount of effort that you want to put into the program. With engineering, your schedule is essentially full, which means you don't have enough wiggle room to reduce your course workload or to retake some courses that you might fail in comparison to other majors. Think about it like this, riding a bike or learning any other activity is gonna be really hard to do if you're not willing to put in any work or any effort towards learning it. From my experience, engineering has four main areas that you need to focus on in order to succeed and for it to not be as hard. First, prior knowledge. You must build a bank of understanding in your mind so that way, when you learn a new concept, you're able to draw parallels between it and stuff that you already know from the past. Second, creativity. You must be able to come up with at least like 10 different ways to start or to solve a particular question in engineering, no matter how unlucky that method may be. Third, developing a problem-solving ability is really important, and that just comes from practice and using your prior knowledge and experience. This one is actually really important in engineering because engineering has a lot of patterns and similar concepts, and when you can see these patterns, it becomes a lot easier. Fourth, communication skills. If you can't explain your solution by showing your work, or if you can't explain it to someone else, then you really don't understand it. Studying in groups can actually help you create these strong communication skills because if there's a particular thing that a friend of yours doesn't understand, you can explain it to them, which makes you understand it yourself a lot better. In comparison to just handing in assignments and kind of half-assing the explanation and saying, I don't know, it just is what it is. So basically with these four things and enough repetition, you can truly do engineering and it isn't as hard as everyone makes it seem. Now, of course, being intelligent or having guess, a certain IQ level makes it a little easier, but it's not key. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If you want to see a video on what my engineering exams actually look like, check out this video. Or if you want to see a video on what the easiest and hardest engineering courses are, check out this video. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!